Hello and welcome to MTTV's In the Kitchen with David Bradley. Today we're going to be uh, showcasing three of my most favorite recipes, probably of all time. Uh, gardens are out and we're getting harvest in and we're going to be making a zucchini casserole. And actually this is a recipe that was handed down from my great, great, great grandmother. Uh, and it's been handed down from generation to generation. So uh, it's a wonderful recipe and I'll be telling you all about that a little bit later. Uh, we're also going to have an appetizer uh, using smoked salmon and cucumbers and uh, I'm going to kind of do a do two appetizers in one uh, so stick around for that and the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to make a no-bake chocolate cheesecake pie which is absolutely wonderful so the first thing that we're going to start out with is our chocolate and I've got two bars here of Ghirardelli of uh, the swimmy sweet chocolate and I'm just going to chop that up and we're going to melt it using a double boiler. Now if you want to use your microwave you can do that. Um, usually you put it in, you put your chocolate in for 30 seconds at a time uh, and you'll stir it and repeat the process. Trouble is with the microwave is sometimes uh, when you do that, sometimes you end up scorching the chocolate. And even if it's not just a little bit of it, just some of it. So I always like to do the double broiler method. Uh, you put uh, about an inch or two of water, depending on the type uh, uh, cooker you're using, and put you a glass bowl, something that's uh, Party to heat and uh, basically the steam from the double boiler uh, will uh, melt your chocolate and as soon as it's melted then uh, just allow it to cool slightly and then you can put use it in your recipe so cutting up my chocolate here and uh, get it in Double boiler. This right here is a fantastic recipe. It's so easy. There's no, basically, just melting your chocolate's only cooking to it. The rest of it, we're going to prepare in the mixer and then we'll just put it in the refrigerator for it to set. So, all this here, I'm using a little handy dandy scraper here. I'll put that in. And here in a few moments, this chocolate is going to be melted. And, uh, and like I said, we'll melt it and we'll cool it slightly. And then we'll be ready to get the rest of our pie together. Right, as you can see, we've got our chocolate melted. And now we've let that cool just a little. So now we're going to go ahead and get started on the cheesecake part. So I'm going to start whipping up our cream cheese and I've let this come to room temperature. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of whole milk. And add a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to stop it and I'm going to add my brown sugar. That's a cup of brown sugar, lightly packed. Get it in there. And we're going to let that mix up for a couple minutes and then we're going to add our chocolate. And as you can see, it's whipping up very nicely. It's going to be a really smooth, no-bake cheesecake. So we'll let that uh, whip up and we'll be uh, 
put in our shock van here in just a few moments. All right, we've let that mix now for a couple minutes. And I'm just going to scrape down the bowl and kind of stir the bottom just a little bit. We want to make sure everything is well incorporated. Set up for just a moment. All right. Now we're going to add our melted chocolate. Now we've allowed this to cool. Uh, after you take it off the double boiler, let it cool about five minutes. And, uh, and then just add your chocolate in. And when we start this back up, we'll start the mixer on low speed and then we'll gradually increase it and, uh, to about medium speed. And get it all well incorporated. And just looking at it right now, it looks like, uh, it looks very similar to like a fudge frosting right now. And that smell, if you all can just smell that chocolate smell right now, it's incredible. And then we're going to Scrape down the sides again. And the bottom. Now they have uh, the uh, attachments that have the scraper on them. I'm not fortunate enough to have one of those. But uh, you can get those. Let's go ahead and mix that up real quick. All right. Of course, this yummy part of the, this is usually the part I get at home. Click on that for a while. <laughs> Right, so we've got our chocolate pie crust here. And I just buy a prepared pie crust because honestly I have made uh, homemade pie crust. And honestly, I can't tell a big difference in the taste. And the prepackaged ones for me stay together better. So. That's just me. So we'll spread this around. Well, that's going to look very nice. All right, and then we're going to just put this in the refrigerator for about an hour until it's set, and uh, then it should be ready to eat. So the next thing that we're going to do when we come back is we're going to get started on our zucchini casserole. It is delicious. We're going to get started on our zucchini casserole. And this recipe was handed down to me from my grandmother, Thelma Bradley. And she actually got it from her grandmother, uh, which was Grandma Williams. That's I've heard about Grandma Williams my whole life. Apparently she was some awesome cook. But uh, I remember one summer, this was back in the 80s, uh, they had a bumper crop of zucchini come in and uh, we were all just kind of sitting around like, what are we going to do with all this zucchini? And 
my grandmother went frantically searching throughout the whole entire house for this recipe. And when she found it, I mean, you just see that sigh of relief on her face. And, uh, and, it, and we made zucchini casserole. She had all kinds of, uh, of course, she cooked and put food up all the time in the freezer. So she had some full pans. And uh, we put up probably 16 to 18 casseroles that day. And uh, this is a very, very old recipe, a very simple recipe. And uh, basically what it starts with is some zucchini. Uh, and you just chop it up. And I'll just tell you, I want you to chop this up however you like. If you like the big whole slices, by all means, chop it that way. If, uh, if you like them chopped into cubes, go for it. it. It's absolutely fine. There's really no right or wrong way with the zucchini. So, got this here. I'm going to go ahead and get our pan ready so we can go ahead and start sauteing. And I'm going to put in probably about a teaspoon of olive oil. And to that I'm going to add about a tablespoon of butter. And uh, get that started. And that's going to flavor our zucchini and our onions that we're going to be sauteing pretty nicely. So go ahead and let that melt for just a moment. I'll go ahead and keep on chopping up some of this zucchini. Um, but this is a wonderful, very easy recipe. Uh, and again, this came from my great, great, great grandmother. And uh, I tell you, I miss those summers that I spent with my grandmother. Uh, we did a lot of fishing and a whole lot of eating. Uh, I remember she would say that We'd go through a, a loaf of bread and a carton of eggs every morning. Uh, but uh, those were times, that, much simpler times. And, and uh, I only wish my daughter uh, could experience that because uh, we really did live in some really good times. Then. All right. So we'll go ahead, and, go ahead and get that spread around here. It's right at melted and we'll go ahead and get started on some of these get them to saute it and what I'm making here today and if you've uh, noticed I'm doing uh, a little bit uh, uh, quite a bit of zucchini here is I'm actually making some individual uh, ramekins uh, so each person can have their own zucchini casserole and uh, which will be wonderful. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna let that start uh, sauteing away. I've got a Vidalia onion that we're gonna be putting in and uh, you can do this however you want to do it. I think I'm gonna do little rings for mine. Little half moon rings kind of mimic the uh, zucchini here. Just kind of going to pull them apart. Now if you like your onions more finely diced, just however you want to do it. This is a very versatile recipe. Basically there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just going to get all these in there, just like so. This Vidalia onion smells incredible. And I love it when onions hit the heat. Smells the whole house up, just smells so great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and let this saute. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my zucchini prepared just like I did a moment ago and have everything ready. We're gonna go through uh, two cycles of sauteing and then uh, we'll put everything together and then we'll make our individual uh, casseroles. Right, we're getting started on our second batch of zucchini. And get it started back. We're going to put our, in our onions. And we're going to cook this for, uh, saute it for about 10 minutes uh, until the vegetables become soft 
onions will be semi-translucent and of course they'll finish their cooking uh, in the oven and uh, go ahead and get all these in here and then just make sure you also put some salt and pepper that'll help flavor everything I usually put in a nice pinch of kosher salt is what I use about a couple of pinches of salt and I use some fresh cracked pepper that way everything is nice and flavorful so we'll go ahead and get this cooked up and then we'll be ready to get our casserole dishes ready we've got our vegetables sauteed very nicely and I'm telling you this right here is a dish all its own. If you just wanted to saute uh, zucchini and onions and serve it as a side dish, it's ready now because I'm telling you this is delicious. Now one thing I'm going to add here is I have diced a tomato and the original recipe actually calls for uh, tomato slices. Well, one thing that I have done is I have actually tried, tried it with the tomato slices. And I'm sure that, uh, that my grandmothers before me never had an issue. But if I don't dice the tomato and kind of seed it a little bit, uh, I have issues with the casserole being a little bit watery toward the bottom. But if I dice them, I generally don't have no problem. So. So just FYI, if you're one of those miracle cooks that can get it to not be watery, you should be in good shape. So, All right, so now, lay this off to the side here. We've got our ramekins ready, and I, as I said, I'm doing individual. But if you had just had a regular large casserole dish, that's no problem. You could go ahead and just fill it up. And here's what I do. Here's my method. I start putting my zucchini mixture in my ramekins and I fill it just about halfway All right? and then and you know my rule about cheese shredded cheddar cheese and it must be hand shredded none of that none of that pre-shredded stuff that you buy in the store to make life easy nobody wants that this is what you want Alright, and I'm making a mess, but that's okay. And then I'm going to add another layer of the zucchini, onions, and tomato mixture. On top of that. As you've probably figured out, this is extra, extra cheesy and extra good. So, give me a layer of cheese there. All right, and then we'll just continue until we got them all uh, filled, and then we'll top with our crushed crackers, and we'll be ready to bake. I'm going to put our crackers on our casseroles now, and if you don't, uh, if you don't have crackers, or if you don't like to use crackers, uh, a really nice seasoned breadcrumb will be just fine. Uh, that on all of them. I'm trying not to make too big of a mess. I'm a kind of a messy cook, but I think most of us are. We're too excited about the end product to take our time. Get our cracker topping on there. I can just about taste these right now. That cheese has already started melting from the, the warmth of those vegetables. It won't take me much just to go ahead and try to dive right on in. It's covered really nicely. Put a little bit of butter because 
better makes everything better. And I'm just going to put a little dot it with better. Put just a little couple of little slivers on each of our casseroles here. So ready for the oven and I'm going to put this in a preheated oven 350 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes and when they come out they'll be bubbly and ready to eat and next we're going to get started on our appetizers which is smoked salmon and cucumber tea sandwiches we're going to get started on our appetizers and I'm actually going to kind of do two appetizers in one. I'm going to make uh, cucumber tea sandwiches and smoked salmon tea sandwiches and these are so good. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I've got a package of room temperature cream cheese and to that I'm going to add about a half a cup of mayonnaise and this is going to be our mixture and also to that I'm going to add a whole packet of ranch seasoning and this is going to basically going to be our base for our sandwich and so we're just going to take a spoon and kind of work all of this in cream cheese and good mayonnaise and this ranch seasoning very good and this is going to be our spread we're going to be putting on our bread and we're going to make two different sandwiches we're going to make the cucumber sandwiches using a hothouse English cucumber and then we're going to uh, make our smoked salmon uh, sandwiches and we're using ready-to-eat Norwegian smoked salmon it's uh, some of the best salmon uh, that you can buy really good so we've got our cream cheese mayonnaise and our ranch seasoning mixed together and right now just to kind of complete it we're gonna throw in a little bit of dill just gonna mince that up dill is an excellent herb to use when you're making the cucumber or uh, a smoked salmon tea sandwiches. It really complements both the vegetable and the salmon. So it's really, really good. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And that way we have a little bit of our, uh, our dill flavor in our mixture. Just kind of stir that in. I'm using fresh dill, but you can absolutely use the dried dill that you get uh, out of the uh, uh, out of your spices uh, at the market. Dried dill is fine. Uh, not all stores have the fresh dill, so we've got that. Now, if this was to be a little loose, and this really isn't, but if this was to be a little bit more loose than what it is right now, you could put this in the refrigerator for about a half hour and let it firm up just a little bit. But I think this is going to be just fine as it is. So, now we're going to go ahead and we'll start on the first of our sandwiches, which is going to be our cucumber sandwiches. And I use a hothouse English cucumber and Slice these to your liking, but now I really feel like for an appetizer, you want to slice these fairly thin. You don't have to peel it or anything. It actually looks nicer with the edge still on it. And, but just real thinly slices, real thin slices. Just like so. And we're going 
gonna take just kind of move right along here we've got uh, some rye bread and a lot of times you can find the party rye I was unable to find it uh, when I went to the store so I just got some regular rye bread and I'm going to cut the crest off just like so and then we take our mixture here and spread it on our bread and then we top with our cucumber slice and then we can top with our fresh dill sprinkles it's a wonderful wonderful appetizer we'll go ahead and make the rest of these up get them ready to plate then we'll start on our smoked salmon tea sandwiches we're going to put together our smoked salmon tea sandwiches now and we're just using the same mixture and take a little, little sliver of our salmon and we're going to put a little bit of the dill on the salmon and we're going to put another little dollop of the mixture on our bread and we'll actually make it a whole sandwich just like that now you can serve it just like that or you cut them into triangles and stack them on your plate just like that and that is your smoked salmon tea sandwiches so we'll go ahead and we'll get the rest of these plated up and then we'll have our zucchini casserole coming out of the oven and we'll have our dessert and we'll be ready to eat well i don't know about you but i am ready to eat and i want to dive into that so fast but first thing i'm going to try here is our salmon uh, tea sandwiches mm. that fresh dill that smoked salmon mm. that is incredible absolutely incredible and I can't wait any longer I've got to try this wonderful cheesy zucchini casserole Mm. that's fantastic so cheesy and those vegetables where they were sauteed in that butter and olive oil you can just you can taste the layers of flavor in that so good and no meal is complete without dessert try this no bake chocolate cheesecake pie This is one they may not remember what you fixed for supper, but they'll definitely remember what you had for dessert. Delicious. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our show today. Our recipes are always available on MRTC.com, which has been freshly updated. The website has. And uh, just click on, go to MTTV, click on the recipes link. And they have the recipes from all of our past shows as well. So for... David Bradley and our team here at Mountain Telephone, we bid you good day.